So once we're on uh, Fortin's website, we're going to click on support. We're going to click on Flashlink Manager View Page. Then we're going to click on Download Now right here. You'll go through the prompts to install the program. When the program's installed, we're going to open it up and we're going to put the Evo All on the Flashlink to complete the installation using the decryptor process. We've installed the Flashlink Manager on our computer. We're going to go ahead and we're going to open the program. It's giving us a screen that indicates it's time to update the Flashlink Manager. Now we do not have the programmer plugged in. This is the screen you will see. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug our programmer into the USB port. The Flashlink Manager has detected the programmer and is indicating we do not have a module plugged in. At this point we're going to plug our module in. When we do this, Flashlink Manager will recognize the module and it will bring up a screen that looks like this. I'll have already set the initial programming on the device so the only thing you'll have to do is select decryptor select send data at this point the data will be sent to the Fortin server for decryption when decryption is complete the data will be loaded on the module we want to make sure we have this box checked. Automatically update Evo All when ready. This will automatically update the Evo when the process is complete. The process can take a few minutes and you'll get an indication when it is complete. The bypass module is now being updated. The decryptor process is now complete. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove our module and reinstall it in the vehicle. I'm going to show you what to do if you have a diesel engine and you want to set diesel mode or you want to change the runtime or any of the other parameters that you have access to. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the bypass option screen. Now remember this is all optional. You're ready to go and install the module and it will work at this point. But if you have a diesel you want to you want to click the bypass options tab, turn the setting protections off, scroll down the standalone remote starter settings, click the arrow to open up all the sub settings under uh, the standalone remote starter and you would select D 1.3. This would be the diesel mode. If I wanted to change the runtime to 30 minutes, I would go down and change D 1.8. If I want to go from lock, lock, lock activation to lock, unlock, lock activation, I would select the appropriate box. When we're done making our selections, um, we'll go back up and we're going to go ahead and we're going to lock the module uh, so that these settings can't be erased upon reset. So I want to make sure we don't change you know some of the core settings because the unit won't operate. But everything under this D1 tab uh, you can configure for runtime and activation method and whether it's diesel or gas. So now we're going to go up, we're going to turn the setting protections back on and then we're going to click save and we're going to watch in the upper right hand corner for confirmation that our settings have been saved. So we have confirmation. It's time to go ahead and reinstall the device in the vehicle. We're back in the vehicle and we're going to reconnect our device. There's no need to hold the program button down. We're just going to plug in all of the plugs. We're going to start with the power plug or the four pin data plug. Next we're going to plug in the 20 pin. Then we're going to plug in the red plug and we're going to plug in the white can plug. 
this point we can go ahead and we can activate our remote starter we have our vehicle up and running show you from outside. 